Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. I'm solo today and we're going to talk today about strategy. I know I'm like a big geek when it comes to strategy. That's just how my brain works. But I assure you that when you implement strategies in life and business, you're more likely to get the results that you want. And in addition, you're more likely to get the results faster. No matter the journey that you are on or the goals that you've set, if you want to achieve results, you have to implement strategy. Positive change and results happen only when you implement strategy. Whether you want to start and grow a business or you want to change your lifestyle, you need to have a strategy. Why is it important to implement strategy when you want to start and grow a business? Well, it's quite simple because to make an impact or create the results that you want, you need a strategic plan to get there. Employing a strategy will help you take intentional, effective action to get from point A to point B. Think about it. Would you go on vacation without mapping out an itinerary? No, of course not. You'll create and implement a strategy for how you're how you're going to spend your time, where you'll stay, your mode of transportation, even the dates that you're going to avoid maybe a specific temperature or crowds or different things like that. You'll have a strategy for what you pack. You'll have a strategy for who or what you'll visit while you're there, and where and what you'll eat. You'll be much more relaxed when you have a strategy in place and you don't have to feel anxious about what's to come. There's some value, of course, to spontaneity when you travel, but it still gives you a better experience when you have a strategy in place, hands down. The same is true for your business and life in general. Strategy is key for making decisions about systems and processes in your business and in your personal life. When thinking about the importance of strategy for results, consider the following areas in which it's necessary to implement strategy and processes for your business. The first is writing copy and brand storytelling. How you write your message, how and where you tell your story are both strategic components that you need to implement. How you structure your website. You want to make sure that there's ease of use for your customer, that there's clarity, the content is valuable, and that the menu makes sense. Sending emails. We'll call it email marketing. The frequency of your content, the frequency that you send out your emails, the type of content you're going to produce, building your list, nurturing your audience, having calls to action, writing newsletters, all of these things need a strategy if you're going to convert that cold audience that comes in and joins your list to paying clients. Creating calls to action. Maybe for a blog post, it's to grow your email list. Maybe when you're a guest on a podcast, it's to grow your email list. Maybe it's to invite people to a discovery call. Maybe it's to ask people to buy now. What is the strategy that you can put into place for when and what calls to action that you put out there into the world? You need a strategy for creating demand. What, when, and how you'll do things to create that demand. You need a strategy for increasing your visibility. Creating a a budget, your revenue goals, your expenditures, charitable giving, your payroll, all of that comes with a strategy. Launching a new program, free launch copy, marketing, sales, promotion, content, all of that requires strategy. Your marketing plan has to be strategic. Your mindset, maintaining a positive mindset requires daily action Create a strategy as to when you will work on your mindset, how you will work on your mindset, what you will focus on when you work on your mindset, and what time of day do you want to focus on working on your mindset? SEO, search engine optimization, 
is a strategy in and of itself. And it's one that is absolutely necessary for people to find you. Blogging, which I'm going to give you a really good example for in just a minute, needs a strategy. You don't want to just sit down and write. You need a strategy for the content you're creating and how you're going to present that content. Again, content creation, it needs a strategy. You don't want to be all over the place. You want to have a strategy for not only what you create, but when you share it, where you share it, and what the intention is behind that. Anytime you do anything in your business, you want to have a strategy involving evaluation. What went well? What didn't? What will you change and do differently next time? And this will help you grow in your business. Public relations, PR. What is your strategy there? Are you going to pitch to podcasts? Are you going to pitch to um, magazines, radio shows? What is your main goal for, for public relations, for increasing visibility, for your marketing? All of these things loop together and require a strategy so that you're not duplicating efforts and so that you're showing up as your authentic self and not causing confusion for your audience. Sales is a strategy. How are you going to sell? Are you going to hire someone to sell for you? Or are you going to sell for yourself? How will you sell? To whom are you going to sell? And how are you going to convert them to buyers? Automation. Let's think about the speed and ease for people to work with you. How can you simplify your business by saving time and saving money when you automate? What can you automate? What are you doing on repeat? How can you create a strategy to simplify the back end of your business as well as the front end of your business to make it easier for your clients to onboard, to become a client? And you need a strategy for how you're going to differentiate yourself from everyone else in your space. And that's personal branding. Without creating and implementing strategy, for each area of your brand and business, you'll have no direction. You won't be able to take intentional, effective action. When you have no direction, your soulmate clients will be confused. Implementing strategy comes from a place of clarity. When you have clarity, your soulmate clients will have clarity about you, what you do, and how you're going to help solve their problem or help them solve their problem. How, how you approach strategy is ultimately going to determine the end results in your business. So I mentioned before that I wanted to share an example of blogging. So let's dive into that. First, when you sit down to write a blog, you must decide, why are you writing the blog? What is the goal for writing the blog? Is it to create a... Uh, um, inspiration for your audience? Is it to educate them? Is it to entertain them? Do you want your reader to take a specific action upon reading the blog post? Your content in the blog post should relate to your brand. It should be about the problem that you solve for your clients. It should give them information on what it is that they need from you. That guide them. Ultimately, you're a guide. Explain why people should hire you or someone like you. Differentiate yourself from all others in your area of expertise by providing value and giving them the content that they need to recognize that you're the expert that you are. Be what your clients expect from you. Inspire your readers to take action. Provide valuable action tips and tools and have a call to action at the end. Secondly, you need a strategy for laying out the content of the blog. The content should be readable and skimmable. Include headers that indicate what the reader will find in that blog post or that section of the blog post. In addition, the headers should include keywords and key phrases. This is part of your search engine optimization strategy. Your strategy should include a story that helps your readers gain an emotional connection with the blog post and you as the writer. Fourth, include a call to action. 
This may go back to the reason that you're writing the blog post. What do you want your reader to do once you once they have read the blog and read your valuable content? Fifth, every blog post should have internal hyperlinks. Those internal hyperlinks are going to lead your reader down a rabbit hole of valuable content on your website so that they stay on your site longer. This will help with SEO, and it'll also help you rank higher on Google. Sixth, use external links. But if you're using external links, I have to emphasize something very important for you. You have to make sure that the source is reliable and that that link isn't likely to change. It is important to refer only to reliable links because if you put links to other sites on your blog post or your website, but those links break, then that can influence your domain rating overall and how Google sees you as a website. Seventh, a call to action is a necessary strategy for every successful blog post. Don't leave your readers hanging. Guide them by telling them what it is that you want them to do, what it is that they can do to ultimately get the answers to their questions or to have you help them solve their problem. Maybe it's not a discovery call, but maybe it is downloading a free ebook or a lead magnet that is then going to get them onto your email list so you can continue to nurture them and ultimately convert them to paying clients. The importance of strategy for collaborations. I wanna share this example with you because I think it's so powerful in explaining the importance of really discerning whether a collaboration is good for you as well as good for your soulmate clients. I recently had a conversation with one of my coaching clients, Susan. She was excited because she had an opportunity to collaborate with another business owner. The collaboration details were that Susan was going to write a blog post about the product that the other business owner was selling. Let's just call that other business no that other business owner owner. <laughs> Sorry guys, I can't talk. Let's just call that other business owner Julie. She was selling Tupperware. Julie in return for this blog post was going to do a social media post about Susan's business. Susan is a publisher. She helps Christian authors publish their books, be it a memoir, be it a cookbook, be it um, a children's book. She's a publisher. Okay. So the collaboration sounds great, right? Wrong. And here's why. First of all, the collaboration was much more beneficial for Julie, not so much for Susan. Let me explain. Susan spent time writing a very polished blog. She even had the SEO for the blog optimized. However, the product dishes were not, was not related at all to the service that Susan provides for her clients. So what does that mean? Well, first, it's unlikely that Susan's soulmate client will be searching for a keyword related to that product. And if they are, they aren't expecting to come to her website. Therefore, there's no benefit to having a keyword or key phrase at, for the SEO on that site. It will confuse Google because that's not what she does. It's not related to her business. It's not related to the services she provides. And it's not really related to her ideal clients and bringing them into her, her the fold of her business. If Google sees that keywords and key phrases aren't aligned with the other content on the website, it could affect your ratings. Second, if Susan's blog post is listed in a Google search for this specific keyword or key phrase, it's going to result in confusion when people come to the website and see that she's not selling Tupperware, she's actually a publisher and she's selling publishing services. It's important to note here that confused people do not buy. So you do want to make sure that your collaborations make sense and aren't going to result in confusion. Third, it takes seconds to create a social media post and only 2% of an audience will see that post. A blog that is optimized for SEO has the opportunity to reach the masses. 
So you can see that the collaboration was not of equal value. It wasn't equally beneficial. In addition, Julia's audience is probably confused as to why Julie is posting about a service that Julie isn't even using. Fourth, when the collaboration doesn't lend to a valid call to action at the end of the blog post, Susan now loses an opportunity to engage her readers. You don't ever want to put a call to action to go to someone else's, to go buy someone else's product. You want to nurt, continue to nurture your audience. And that call to action should be to connect with you on a deeper level. So join your email list or book a discovery call with you. In addition, Google may flag unrelated collaborations as spam. And the sixth thing is that the content of the blog, or I should say, if the content of the blog isn't related to your product or service, it provides no value for your soulmate client. It doesn't demonstrate your expertise, and it may lead, like I said, to confusion. Now, okay, so maybe talking about Tupperware could be beneficial if there's this really great product that nobody's aware of, but think of it in terms of your soulmate client. If they are coming to you, are they expecting to read about Tupperware? Nope. They're expecting to read about how to publish a story, a story or a book. So make sure that whatever you do, when you are going to collaborate someone that you're aligned it makes sense for your audience and for your business. The importance of strategy doesn't involve flattery. It is very flattering to be asked to collaborate. Even better if the collaboration opportunity includes payment for a backlink opportunity for one of your on one of your blog posts. I get these requests all the time. So I'll have someone reach out to me and they've written a, a blog post about real estate. And they want to backlink to one of my web, one of my blogs. They want me to put a link to their site or to their blog post. It makes absolutely zero sense. It doesn't matter that they want to give me $150. I still have to go into my website. I have to put that black backlink there. And if that, here's a couple of things to consider if you are approached with this. Number one, how well written is that other blog post? If it's not search engine optimized, if it doesn't have good grammar, if it's not readable, then that's going to bring your backlink on your website down. It's going to have less weight, less value, because Google's going to see that that's not a reputable source that you're referring people to. And ultimately, you could be penalized on your, your SEO strategy or how Google rates your domain. So you have to be very cautious, not to mention for me to put a link to an article about real estate makes absolutely zero sense unless I have a blog post on my website about realtors and maybe personal branding for realtors, but I don't. So it doesn't make sense for me to have that link. Here are the facts. If the collaborator is not reliable, you could include the backlink and it would be invalid or later break. And this influences your overall domain score. It's important, like I said, to have those internal links. When you have internal links, you can pretty much rely on the fact that your links aren't going to break unless you change them, of course, and then you've got to redirect. But you have no control over other people's links and what is going to happen to them. So if you're using backlinks for unreliable sources, you're at a higher risk of having those those links break. In addition, if the collaborator is, not, collaborator is not aligned with your values or their business isn't related to your business, you will confuse your audience. And I reiterate, confused people do not buy. So the very last thing you want to do is allow your people to be confused. You don't ever want to be the cause of confusion. So when you're thinking about blogging, when you're thinking about implementing strategies across any part of your business, make sure that it makes sense. It makes sense with your end goal, with the results you're striving for, and it makes sense from the outside as well as internally. Implementing strategy will allow you to achieve results faster. Head 
over to the show notes, because when you go over to the show notes, I've linked other blog posts and you can actually review that list that I gave you earlier, those different areas of your business that require strategies and the reasons why. Once you've reviewed that list, make sure that if there is a strategy you don't have in place, make sure that you go and create that strategy, map it out, just like a roadmap if you go on vacation, and make sure that you then put in that strategy in place in your business. I can assure you that when you create a strategic plan for your business. And when you have strategies in place for every part of your business, things are going to make so much more sense. You're going to be able to automate. You're going to be able to just do so much more faster. You'll get results faster and you'll make money faster and you'll have an impact faster. When you begin to think strategically, you'll see transformation. I promise you that. So if you have questions about your brand marketing strategy and where you can improve it to create more demand in your business, schedule a discovery call with me. First of all, I love to get to know you guys. I love to get to learn more about your businesses. And I absolutely love to be able to help you with that area that you're struggling with the most. It's completely free to have a discovery call. We can talk about where you might need to implement a strategy if you don't have one in place. I can help you identify those areas. But not only that, we can see if we're a good fit to work together. If I can help you long term with your overarching strategy for your business and how you can build that solid foundation first and then move on over to save social media to build more relationships, but let's get your solid foundation built first. And that includes strategy, your personal brand and that brand marketing strategy, which are going to help you not only hit the ground running with your business, but really truly transform it so that you can be as successful as you want to be. All right, you guys, that's it for today quick and dirty solo episode all on strategy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you found this information helpful, then great, super, please leave a rating and review. And if you know anybody else who wants to start and grow a business, who is confused about where they might need strategy in their business or even in their life, you know, this strategy is so applicable for every aspect, life and business. So share it, spread the word. That's how we grow as a podcast. And that's how I'm able to get good guests, great guests and inspiring guests that we've had in the past. So again, I thank you so much for being here. All of the links that I've referred to are in the show notes. You can go over there, just click the button, click the show notes, and it'll take you right over there. And you can access that list as well as the link to book a discovery call, which is very, very simple. It's just bit.ly forward slash discover with Robin. All right, guys, have a great day and I'll see you next week.